Okay, welcome to our Astronomy at Home story time. Today we're going to be reading Papa, Please Get the Moon for Me by Eric Carl, and we're reading this with permission from Simon and Schuster. And reading today is my friend, Linda Shore. So Hi, I'm gonna everybody. introduce Linda, here's Linda, and she's going to read the book for you today. It's wonderful to see all your faces. Is everybody happy today? Yes, okay, well I'm really happy because I get to read one of my favorite stories. So I'm gonna just start reading and I'm gonna share my screen with you, I hope. Hey. Hi. Let's see. Let's see if this works. All right, you can probably for some reason. Ah, here we go. Unmute. Can you see the book? Yes. All right, we'll get started. So the name of this book, Papa, Please Get the Moon for Me. Before Monica went to bed, she looked out of her window and saw the moon. The moon looked so near. I wish I could play with the moon, thought Monica, and she reached for it. But no matter how much she stretched, she could not touch the moon. Could you guys all stretch? Stretch and see if you can reach the moon. Stretch really far. Stretch. Do you think you can get to it? It's so hard. I cannot. Papa said Monica to her father, please get the moon for me. So Papa got very, very, very long ladder. See the ladder? It's so long. He carried the very, very, very long ladder towards a very, very high mountain. See the mountain? Then Papa put the very long ladder on the top of the very high mountain. I don't see Papa. I see the top of the mountain. Where did he go? Oh, there he is, and there's the mountain. Look at him climb all the way up, up, up. Up and up and up he climbed. My goodness. Look, he's all the way at the moon. Do you see it? Gotta move this out of the way. <laughs> Finally, Papa got to the moon and he said, my daughter Monica would like to play with you, said Papa. But my goodness, you are much too big. Every night I get a little smaller, said the moon. When I am just the right size, you can take me with you. And indeed the moon got smaller and smaller and smaller until the moon was just the right size, then Papa took it. And down and down and down he climbed. Do you see him holding the moon in his hand as he climbs down the long, long, long ladder? Here, said Papa to Monica, I have the moon for you. And Monica jumped and danced with the moon. She hugged the moon and she threw it in the air. But the moon kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And finally, it disappeared altogether. Oh my goodness. But then one night, Monica saw a thin sliver of the moon reappear. Can you find it in the sky? Can you look at the book and find the moon? You can point and show your parent or your friend or who's ever with you. Can you see it? And each night the moon grew. See it getting bigger? And it grew 
and it grew. Oh, look at that. It's a big round full moon again. And that is the end of the story. Isn't that a wonderful story? It's one of my favorites. And one thing about this story is it is about the moon, but it's very difficult to go and get the moon and bring it back. And so what the story is, I think about is that there are grown-ups in the world who love you so much that they're going to try to do things that might seem absolutely impossible and they'll do it for you because they love you so much like Papa did in this book. Do you like that story? I like that story a lot. Yes? Thank you, Linda. Oh, I see one of our friends has that one. Oh, Looks good. Like Vera has Papa Get the Moon for Me. I love that story. It's really one of my favorites. I do astronomy for a living, so that's probably one of the reasons I like it so much. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to do an activity. Did you guys bring crayons or pens or something to draw with? Yeah? Good. Because tonight, or actually not even tonight, in the daytime, you can see the moon. You can try to find it yourself. And what I want to do is show you a picture of what the moon looks like in the daytime right now. And you can go and try to find it and draw it. So I'm going to show it to you. And Anna will show you how you can draw it. But let me show it to you. And then she'll show you how to draw. And then I'll show it to you again. And you can trace it or you can do it what you'd like. How's that sound? Sound good, Anna? <laughs> Sounds great. OK, let me share that again. All right, there's the end of our book. Can you see that? Yes? You sure can. Okay, good. I want to make sure. All right, this is what the moon looks like in the sky right now in the daytime. You should be able to see it now if you go out, but don't go out yet because we want to be together for a little while longer, okay? Take a look at the shape of that moon. It's like one of the shapes in the, in the book we just wrote, we just read together, okay? So Anna's gonna show you a couple of ways that you can draw it if you didn't remember to bring crayons, okay? So I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, Anna. Hey, thank you, Linda. That is one of my favorite books too. So, like Linda said, we're going to draw that moon. And maybe some of you are keeping a moon journal, like from the first week when we read Breakfast Moon. I have something a little different for drawing. So maybe you have some um, crayons and markers and paper, and that'll work great. And that's a, how we usually draw. But I am going to try doing some drawing with, what is this? Some salt. So I have a bunch of salt. You could also use sugar for this. And I have a tray, you know, these kind of trays, you could use any kind of tray or plate. And I put some black paper in the bottom. So I'm going to take my salt like this, and I'm going to sprinkle a whole bunch of salt in the bottom of this tray on that black paper. Get that open. So I'm going to cover the black paper with salt so it looks like it's white from the salt. And then with my finger, I'm going to draw in the salt. So I might draw the shape of the moon like we saw in that picture. And it feels really nice on my fingers. And then if I wanna draw something new, I can just shake it to erase my drawing. A little lumpy. And then I could draw something else. Like maybe I wanna draw a big full moon. So if you have some uh, salts or sugar and a dark colored plate or some black paper in a tray, you could do some salt drying like this. And it looks like Linda has some too. So I'm gonna switch back over to her camera. And let's see what she's doing. Go ahead, Linda. <laughs> oh, I just have a pie plate. So if you have a black dish, that works well. And the other thing you can do, this is the, this is the advanced way, is I can 
take the shape like that. See what I did? And then I can remove the part I don't want. Ah, see if I can do it. Easier to do. It's hard to do on black paper. But if you have a plate, you can do this and move all this stuff out of the way. Oh, wow. That's really this good, your... Linda. You even have a round yeah. plate, round like the moon. <laughs> round like the moon. So if you have something like that, so parents, if you've got something like that, you can you can do you fancy can stuff. And if you make a mistake, if you make a mistake, you can erase just like Anna did. Oh, look, I made a gibbous move. <laughs> Tons of stuff you can do. <laughs> All right, should we take a look at the picture of the moon again and try to draw it together? Yeah. Okay, let me show you the picture again so you can, you can so see. So get out your crayons and markers or if you happen to have some salt in a tray for drawing and see if you can draw that moon. And then I would like to suggest that we all go outside sometime this afternoon and see if we can find this moon in the sky. See if it looks like you're drawing. And you could also try keeping a moon journal. Um, two weeks ago, we read that Breakfast Moon book and the kids in that book were keeping a moon journal. And if you go to our website, we have some moon journal sheets you can print out. Linda, we have a question maybe you want to talk about. Why can sure. we see the moon in the daytime? Oh, and if you boy. could answer that question while we're drawing. That is a, that is a very good question. So the moon, goes around the earth in a circle. It orbits around the earth. And sometimes the moon is on the same side of the earth as the sunny side of the earth. And sometimes the moon is on the side of the earth that's in nighttime. And this particular moon, when it's just this shape, is a good moon to see when, the moon, when you're on the daytime side of the earth. That's a very hard question to answer without a lot of models in your hand. <laughs> yeah, but you can go out and see the moon during the day. In fact, you can see it in the daytime just as much, uh, just as often as you can see it at nighttime. It Pretty just doesn't look quite as bright because the sun is so bright. That's right. All right, did we, have we drawn our moons? Can you hold up your moon drawings? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing because I want to see what people drew. Let's see. Did anyone draw the moon? Let's, oh, look. Oh, I see Liam drew in the salt. I like that moon, Liam. And I see Vera and Ida are drawing in the salt too. Wonderful. I see some marker drawings. Benjamin, I see you drew a gibbous moon and a crescent moon. Oh, and Campbell has one too. Thank you, Campbell. I love your shadow photos that you sent us. Well, Bodie's having a good time making a moon there. Oh, Elizabeth made. Um, nice job, Amelia. Elizabeth Smith has has the takeaway takeaway way of drawing a moon. <laughs> nice. Nice job. What else do we have? Oh, I see. I Liam is holding up his picture. And Amelia, look at that. Oh, these are wonderful drawings. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna have a couple more things to share with you and then we'll have time for questions and more sharing. So I just wanted to make sure that you know before you go, and we'll stick around for a while, but I wanted to make sure you know about next week when we're going to be reading There Once Was a Sky Full of Stars by Bob Cralin. And Teresa will be reading that one. Um, so that's um, a week from today at the same time. And again, you go to the same website to sign up for it. And we have a request in advance of that one, in, in advance of next week's story time. We wanna ask if you could send us a photo um, of a light fixture outside. So some kind of light outside um, on your house or around your neighborhood, um, because we're gonna be talking about 
different kinds of lights and how um, they affect how we can see the stars. So send us your photos of lights or any photos of you doing other activities too at um, storytime at astrosociety.org. We love seeing your photos and we might share some of them next week during story time. All right, and I'm going to stop our recording now and then we can take some questions and sharing. Thanks everybody. See you next week. Bye.